Hey everybody, welcome back to another Flash recap and review. It's crazy to think that it's been a month since the last episode. It's, it's pretty wild. This uh, pandemic is still going strong. So as far as I know, what they're doing is they're going to play through the rest of the episodes they have filmed and edited. And then when they get to the point where they couldn't film anymore, then they're going to switch over to Stargirl. That seems to be the plan right now. So we're going to enjoy it for as long as we can. And then there's probably going to be a big gap between... I think it's episode 21 and then episode 22 or 23, something like that. Today I'm talking about season six, episode 16, entitled So Long and Good Night. If you haven't seen this episode, you can go watch it on CWTV.com and then come back here because I am talking spoilers. This was, I think, a really fun episode. I think it did a lot for the story of the whole season. They managed to pack a lot of stuff into this one episode, which I think was really good, especially for an episode after a really long break. There are about three or four main stories in this episode, but the most important one, the most prevalent one, is Joe investigating Carver, trying to get dirt on him, trying to figure out what he's up to, and seeing the ramifications of that, how it's gonna affect his job, his family, all that stuff. I think that's really good. And then there's more with Mir Iris, of course, and her new plan with Ava McCulloch to try and take down her husband and The Flash. And also there's Ralph and Sue Dearborn back at it again. So there was a lot to enjoy in this episode. Let's start with the Joe stuff. I actually really enjoyed the tone of this part of the episode. It was part crime thriller, part horror, because Dragdoll was in the mix. And of course, he's a really creepy villain. Every time he's on screen, I just cringe at how he moves around and stuff. And then on top of that, they added all the CGI to really enhance it and really make it look weird. Shout out to Troy James, who is the physical performer of Ragdoll. He does great. He can really do some crazy, crazy stuff. So in this part of the episode, Joe is trying to get evidence on Carver. He's trying to either get a statement from Sunshine, who is the meta they caught last episode. I thought it was really interesting seeing Joe being a hands-on detective again, really getting down to the nitty-gritty of it. It felt like a movie. It felt very cinematic because you could see Joe is like going through evidence, trying to interrogate people. And then there's twists and turns because, of course, Ragdoll is coming after him, but also other members of Black Hole. So you see that he is also putting his life in danger and then ultimately putting his family and friends in danger. The arc of this episode for Joe is that he finds out that he can't just go after these guys and expect nothing to happen as a result. Like, it is the right thing to do, but he has to think about Jenna, his baby, and Cecile, and Barry, and Iris. Like, everybody else that Black Hole may come after as a result of what he's doing. So they ultimately make the decision for him to go into witness protection. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to be for. I hope it's not for the rest of the season. I mean, I doubt it will be. They may find some way to bring him back. But it was interesting because it really did add stakes to this whole black hole story. There was a really, really intense scene where Cecile gets kidnapped and then they have her on like a pressure triggered bomb. And then Joe switches with her and he tries to like undo the wires before it blows up. And that part, I was like, are they about to kill him? I don't... I know they weren't going to do it because he is one of the best, most popular characters and he's very integral to the story, but I wouldn't put it past them. So for a hot second, I was worried they were going to do it, but they ended up not doing it, which I was really relieved about. But at the same time, he started going to witness protection after. So that was unfortunate. But I am really enjoying where the black hole story is going from here. Next, we have Mira Iris and Ava McCulloch. Ava McCulloch decides that it's time for Barry to lose the rest of his speed because he can't get in the way of what she's trying to do, which is take down her husband. You see Iris now trying, or Mira Iris, trying to ramp up Barry, trying to get him to use all his speed, saying all this crazy stuff to make him feel bad so that he'll run faster to try and save Joe and other people and do everything she says. I've said it before, I'm really not a fan of this Mira Iris storyline. But in this episode in particular, it's very, very, very obvious that this is not his Iris. She says a lot of crazy stuff. At one point she says, now we have something in common. We both lost our parents. And I was like, excuse me? Like, how did he not in that moment be like, you're not Iris? I mean, if you watch the trailer for the next episode, then you see where it's going. But in this episode, if we're just looking at it by itself, how in that moment did he not realize something was up? And maybe he did because you see him walking away after she kicks him out. That's another thing. That's crazy. But after she kicks him out, you see he has a look on his face. And I couldn't tell if that was more of devastation at being kicked out or was it that it was clicking in his mind, okay, yeah, this is not my Iris. She would not say this. She would not do this. I am interested in seeing where her plan goes, but I'm also kind of antsy. Like, I'm waiting for Iris to get out so we can get back to her storyline and her connection to this whole black hole conspiracy thing. 
And one part of the mirror story I actually did not see coming at all is that Singh is a mirror clone also. I was shook. I was like, what? It really makes me wonder, at what point did Ava McCulloch capture him, if she did, or was he there all along? Like, I really am just so confused about what happened there. They also didn't mention what happened to Camilla in the mirror world. I guess that's something they're going to explain later on. Hopefully not too long, but the mirror story did get a lot more interesting for me at that point. One scene I really did enjoy in this mirror section of the episode is where Ava McCulloch sends a mirror to Carver. He pulls the sheet off of it and she's there talking to him and they have this really cool conversation where you find out that he does know that she's still in there. He is aware that she was not actually dead. And you can see they're kind of going head to head. They kind of disagreed on something like along the line of this experiment they were doing and what each of them were trying to get out of it. So I thought that juxtaposition, I thought that kind of conversation they were having was really good. Before I get to the Ralph and Sue stuff, there was a moment with Allegra and Nash Wells where they have a conversation. He saves her from Ragdoll, but then she tries to save him. Like they have this moment where they try to save each other, but there's also an argument where Allegra is still not over what she learned about Nash Wells, which is fair that, you know, he saw her as his daughter because that basically was his daughter from that original Earth that he's from. And I do feel bad for him in this moment because he is trying really hard and he keeps saying, what can I do? What can I do? What can I say? I can't say sorry. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? And I felt bad for him in that moment, but you can see that it's still going to take a while for these two to get back to some semblance of decorum. We'll see, but I'm sure it's not going to last the whole season. I feel like by the end, something big is going to happen and they're going to be cool again. We'll see. All right, now, last part of the episode that I really enjoyed was the Ralph and Sue stuff. Ralph figures out that Sue is going to go after this banker event or whatever, where she's trying to hack the servers of this banking company and get information or money from them. So it was really fun seeing Ralph going after her again. They have this really great chemistry, and it's really funny to see him go back and forth with their witty banter. Cisco is also in the mix, and the scene where he finally meets Sue Dearborn was really funny too. They all play off each other so well, so I'm really excited to see how Sue plays into Team Flash as time goes on. You also find out that Sue is not just doing this because she's evil. Like, she's not trying to steal the money for herself. She's trying to help her parents because Black Hole has something on them. Black Hole is after them. So she's trying to save her parents, and Ralph appeals to her. So now they're going to team up to try and take down Black Hole. I'm really excited to see how all of this stuff, the Carver stuff, the Ava McCulloch stuff, and Sue Dearborn story, I want to see how they all come together in the end to really connect this Black Hole thing. I'm really excited for that. Overall, I would say I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was really fun. It also did a great job of adding layers to the different stories that are going on, especially coming off of a break. They managed to pack a lot of cool things into this episode, and it gets me really excited for what is to come. I'm really excited to see how all the Black Hole stuff ties together and to see what happens with the new Speed Force, too. That's another thing that you get a little mention of in this episode. So, what did you think about the episode? Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.